Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at conservation of charge, Kirchhoff's first law and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by talking about the principle of conservation of charge. We know that charge is a physical property of a particle. For example, we've encountered protons and these have a positive charge. We've also come across electrons. And these are charged particles with a negative charge. So charge comes as either positive or negative. Charge can neither be created nor destroyed. So we can't destroy charge. Instead, charge is transferred by charge carriers. So these charge carriers could be electrons, for example. And electrons are charge carriers because they have a negative charge. So they're carrying a charge Q. And these electrons allow charge to be transferred. So it's not destroyed or created, it's only transferred. For example, if we had a neutral metal rod and removed two electrons, then the rod would become positively charged. So here we have our metal rod and we're removing two electrons. So these two electrons are being removed from the rod. So our number of electrons being removed, n, is equal to two. So now, because this rod has had electrons removed, it's got more protons than electrons. So it's going to have a positive charge, a net positive charge. So although the rod no longer has these negative charges, the negative charge within the rod was not destroyed. It was just carried away by the electrons. So the rod now has a positive charge, but the negative charge that it's lost is carried away by the electrons. The net charge before and after the electrons are removed is zero. So when we talk about the net charge, we mean the charge of the whole system, the rod and the electrons. So before the electrons are removed, the metal rod is neutral. So if the metal rod is neutral and we're not dealing with anything else in our system, then the net charge is zero. However, afterwards, our rod is positively charged. So it's got a positive charge now. But we've also removed these electrons. And we've removed two electrons, remember. So these are carrying away the negative charge. So the negative charge of the electrons is going to be equal to minus 2e. And this is because electrons have a negative charge, hence the minus, and the charge of one electron is the elementary charge e, but we've got two electrons. So the charge of the two electrons is going to be minus 2e. Now, if we look at the charge of the metal rod, it's going to be plus 2e. And this is because we've removed two electrons from the rod. So we therefore have two more protons than electrons. And the charge of a proton is positive and it has magnitude, the elementary charge. Which is why if we've got two more protons than electrons, this gives us a charge of plus 2e. So we can now work out the net charge of the system. So this is going to be equal to plus 2e minus 2e. And this gives us a net charge of zero. And this is the principle of the conservation of charge. The principle of charge conservation is that the total amount of charge in an isolated system remains the same. So it won't change. For example, if we shook a beaker of ionic solution with a closed lid, the total amount of charge within the beaker would remain constant. So in our ionic solution, we have negative ions and we also have positive ions. So before we shake it, the solution will have a certain charge. 
and we've also got a closed lid and the closed lid means that we have a closed system. So we're then going to shake the solution and while we shake it, the ions are going to move. However, we'll find that after we've shaked it, because we've got a closed system from the closed lid, the charge after shaking it is actually going to be equal to the charge before. And this comes from the principle of charge conservation. The universe as a whole can be considered as an isolated system. So our universe is also isolated. And this is because as far as we know, we only know our universe to exist. So there's nowhere else for all the charge in our universe to be transferred to. So it's isolated. Then the principle of charge conservation means that the total amount of charge in the universe must be constant. So since we have nowhere else to transfer this charge to, the charge in the universe has to be constant. So now that we understand what the principle of charge conservation is, we can actually apply this by looking at Kirchhoff's first law. Recall that metal wires are used in circuits to carry current. So here is our circuit. We have a battery here. Here we have a circuit component. We also have a voltmeter, which we don't have to worry about too much now. We'll look at that in a lot more detail later on. And obviously we have our metal wires connecting the circuit. And remember, this is because metal is a conductor. It's got these conduction electrons which allow the metal wires to carry charge. The current can be split by separating a wire into different paths at what is known as a junction. So we've actually got an example of a junction here. This is a junction, so we can see that the wire is splitting into two different paths. So this means that the current, so remember that current flows from the positive plate on the battery to the negative. So if we've got our current flowing through here, when it reaches the junction, it's actually going to split. So we're going to have some current going that way and some current going this way. And then after the junction, it's going to come back and recombine here. Recall that charge can neither be created nor destroyed. So we've said we can't destroy charge, we can't create charge, and this was part of the principle of charge conservation. So if a metal wire splits at a junction, then the total charge before the junction must equal the total charge after the junction, because we've just said that charge can't be created or destroyed. So here is our junction, and here we have our charge going in. And then we have Q1 and Q2, which is where our charge splits. And we've said that the charge going in must be equal to the charge going out because of the conservation of charge, which means that the charge going in is going to be equal to Q1 plus Q2. So that's how charge works in our junction. Now, since the current is the rate of charge flow, the total current before the junction must also equal the total current after the junction. So if we've got some current going in, we're going to call it I in. This current is also going to split into I1 and I2. And we've said that the current going in is equal to the current going out. So the current going in is going to be equal to I1 plus I2, because that's our current going out after the junction. And this applies for any number of wires connected to a junction. So for example, we might have two currents coming in, I1 and I2. So we've got two coming into the junction, and then the junction is split into three branches. So we have I3, I4, and I5. But again, we just said that the sum of the charge going in is equal to the sum of the charge going out. So here we're using sigma as our sum of symbol. So this means that the sum of the charge going in, which is I1 plus I2, must be equal to I3 plus I4 
plus I5 because I3 plus I4 plus I5 is equal to the sum of our charge coming out. And this is Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law states that for any point in an electrical circuit, the sum of current flowing in is equal to the sum of current flowing out. For example, if 12 amps flows into a junction and 5 amps flows through one branch out of the junction, what is the current in the other branch? So we've been told that we've got 12 amps flowing in and then we've got 5 amps coming out of one junction. But we want to know what's the current coming out of the other junction. Well, we've said the current going in is equal to the current coming out. The current going in is 12 amps. So this is going to be equal to the current going out, which is 5 amps, plus this unknown current I, which is what we're looking for. So now, if we just take away 5 from 12, we get what the current in the other junction is. We get that the current in the other junction is 7 amps. So this is how we can use Kirchhoff's first law. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised Smiley Face, and together, let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.